Hello and welcome back. I'm a medical microbiologist and I'm popularly known as the medical professional with the difference because I bring you knowledge like no other. If you're a returning subscriber, this is me saying thank you. And if you just stumbled on this channel, don't forget to subscribe and join the family. I'm doing this video because one of my followers asked me how could she treat vaginal dryness which she got by using clothes so stay tuned let's roll in welcome back so like i was saying earlier we are going to talk about six ways you could treat vaginal dryness caused by clothes and this six ways or six tips I'm going to give could also apply to anyone who's got vaginal dryness caused by alum and yoni pels. If you haven't watched the video on vaginal tightening with clothes, vaginal tightening with alum, I will put the link in the description box so you could watch. I also did a video on vaginal cleansing with yoni pels and I think you should have a look and I will also include that in the description box. Now, the first way or the first tip I have written down here is to check your discharge. You need to know if your discharge is abnormal from your regular discharge and also go see the doctor so you can make sure that there are no particles of clothes or alum left inside your vagina. This is very important, guys. When you check your discharge, notice if it's smelly, is it more brownish, is it greenish? What color is it? Also, you still need to go to the doctor to make sure that the particles of clothes or alum are not inside of you. And at the doctor's, the doctor is going to do um, some tests, some microbiology uh, tests. Uh, swabs will be taken and uh, those, uh, that discharge is going to be cultured on agar plates. And that is, we are going to know if you have any form of microorganism that is in there or that has started growing there because of the use of clothes, alum or yoni pearls. But in this case, since I'm answering this, lady, this lady's question, Let's focus on clothes. I know that a lot of women who use clothes actually take the clothes and infuse it in water, in warm water, maybe overnight or over long hours, and then they begin to use it inside their vagina. So what happens when ladies use this clothes water to douche themselves? They may actually not only use it at the opening of the vagina or their vulva, they, but they also use syringes and other equipment to actually send this clothes water into their vagina. And what is very strange is because you may be having sex with your spouse and you feel you are a little bit uh, dry, you may have the feeling that clothes water has tightened you. Instead, it has dried your whole vagina and change the pH of the vagina, that means it has destroyed the good bacteria that is normally there for self-cleansing, to, to clean the vagina, because those bacteria are lactobacilli and bifidobacteria. So if these two bacteria, especially lactobacilli, are absent in a woman's vagina, she will experience a lot of vaginal discharges, a lot of infections. In fact, she will have smelly discharge. That whole area may become very dry and uncomfortable if you're having intercourse with your spouse. So when you will go to the doctor, the doctor will actually take a swab from you, from your cervix, from the walls of your vagina and culture. After culturing, then the doctor will be able to determine if you have 
a bacterial infection, a fungal infection, and then he'll be able to give you uh, any, a prescription. He'll be able to prescribe you drugs that will eliminate those microorganisms. That would depend on the, the results from the antibiogram. The second point is, which I mentioned earlier, is to test for bacteria and fungal infections through an antibiogram and antifungigram. And I think medical microbiologists know this or biochemists know this, but this is very important so that doctors don't just minister drugs or you don't just run to the pharmacy or to a, a local drugstore and take any form of a pishri or any form of a medication when you haven't tested to find out which organism is really growing in your vagina. Note this, if you can treat or eradicate the microorganism that has found refuge or has made your vagina his or her home, there is a high chance that that environment will begin to flourish again. There is a high probability that when that's those lactobacilli and bifidobacteria begin to grow again in that area, your vagina can return to its normal pH and then you will not be experiencing vaginal dryness. Remember, vaginal dryness leads to bleeding during and after sex. So when you start feeling dry during intimacy or sexual intercourse with your spouse, do not mistake that for vaginal tightening. So a lot of people confuse those two words. Vaginal dryness is different from vaginal tightening. The third point is vaginitis, which indicates the presence of an inflammation of the vagina. There's a difference between vaginitis and vaginosis. When a woman has vaginitis, the walls of her vagina are inflamed. And most times she has pain, and most times this irritation, itches, and in some cases, vaginal discharge. There are some ladies who don't have discharge, but they have the inflammation. So some of the symptoms to vaginitis are asymptomatic in some ladies. So it's very important that we should not misinterpret vaginal dryness with vaginal tightening. Because what happens is most ladies, while they are having intercourse with their spouse and they feel this dryness, they get the feeling, the impression that they have tightened their vagina either with clothes, alum, yoni pills or what other concoctions. Another thing you should be cautious about is vaginitis which indicates an inflammation of the walls of the vagina could actually mislead many females to thinking that they have tightened the vagina. And how does that happen? When the walls of your vagina are inflamed, it makes your, your vagina very sensitive during sex. Sometimes you have painful uh, pain during urination. You have a funny discharge. Bear in mind that some of the symptoms I am mentioning of um, vaginitis are asymptomatic. That means they are not present in every woman. But I can guarantee you that inflammation is always present when vaginitis is diagnosed. So it's very important that a lady should not misinterpret this vaginitis, this inflammation of the uh, vagina with vagina tightening because when the walls of her vagina are inflamed you know and she's having intimacy with her spouse she's most likely to think that it's either the cloves the yoni pills or the alum or whatever she has used has tightened her vagina so the next point i want to give is the fourth point is the drugs when you have been to the hospital and a swap has been done on you, 
um, you'll be done at ECDU. Uh, you can even, they'll even do a urinalysis test to find out and they'll culture your urine and also culture your discharge. In this case, the doctor needs to be very careful with the type of drug he or she is prescribing to you. It needs to be very specific. In fact, it should not be a very broad spectrum anti uh, a biotic or it should be something that is specific to the result of the antibiogram or antifungogram. So if you have like a uh, trichonomiasis, you could be prescribed metromidazole or flashil or tinimidazole. If you have um, fungi, candidiasis or any form, um, any form of fungi, you could be given flucoconazole, ketoconazole, and even some pishris to insert into yourself. That will actually eliminate all that. There are some pishris, that means uh, drugs that are being made to be inserted into the vagina. What I've seen is, this is an aside, I've seen a lot of people take drugs that are meant for the vagina and they have swallowed. And I have seen people take drugs that were meant for their mouth, for oral, for the oral route, and they have insected into the vaginal. So please guys, be very careful. Make sure you read. Make sure you don't go to a quack pharmacist or a quack doctor. Make sure you go to someone who knows what he or she is doing. Look at their antecedents, and then you'll be able to determine if they are the best people to diagnose, treat you. The fifth point is do not douche or use strongly scented soaps or perfume soaps. Stop all form of vaginal washes. Don't insect anything else in your vagina. Anything that says it cleans, whatever it is, bitter leaf. Those are telling you bitter leaf water, aloe vera juice, all of those. Just stop it. The only thing you need to do is just wash your vulva the opening of your vagina. That means your vulva involves your clitoris, your clitoral hood, and your labias. Wash your vulva with mild soap, very mild soap, you know, something that is not so perfumed, and even medicated soaps. Don't use medicated soaps in that area. Don't use any form of antiseptic soap again while you're going through this treatment. And even after that, most of these medicated soaps are not needed for that area. Then the sixth point, which is the most important, is you taking probiotic yogurts. Probiotic yogurts that contain lactobacilli and bifidobacilli. This is very important. These two bacteria are responsible for the health of your vagina. They are responsible for that moisture for self-cleaning your vagina so it's very important that if that area has been altered by cloves alum or whatever you have used you need to take those bacteria sometimes there are also pills there are also some pills that you could also take to replace that so this is actually a drug that i bought in India it's actually VSL number three the living shield that's the company life fresh dry lactic acid bacteria and bifidobacteria capsules I got this from India so you, your doctor could prescribe this for you which you could get this is going to help you a lot to balance out the pH or to regulate the system of your vagina so this is going to help you a lot it contains different strains of bifido bacteria and also lactobacilla so i think you really need this if you can get this from a pharmacy or your doctor prescribes this for you the type of that you really need this will be really good and also you could go to your supermarket and get greek yogurt that contains lactobacilli and bifidobacteria and just take enough of it in the meantime make sure you take a lot of pineapples a lot of pineapples is going to help so you can balance out the ph of that area and then vaginal dryness uh, vaginosis it's going to all go but bear in mind that if you still have microorganisms that have 
inhabited or have harbored in your vagina, there is a very low chance that even if you take these, um, these drugs and you take the uh, Greek yogurt or the probiotic yogurt and you eat a lot of pineapple, there may be little or no change because sometimes these microorganism infections are responsible for vaginal dryness. So check it out with your doctor. If you are being tested and you find out that you don't have vaginitis or any form of microorganisms after doing the urinalysis, after culturing the swaps or the dis your discharge and you don't have any form of infection then you can go ahead and let your doctor get this for you and also you take a lot of probiotic yogurt and take a lot of pineapple and also if you're still also if you're going through the treatment if you're being prescribed other antibiotics ask your doctor to get you one of these i think a, a good doctor will get you this i don't know if this is sold in every country but if you can get this this will be very good um you will still need this even after the microorganisms have been cleared off or eradicated by the antibiotics or the, or the fungi drugs you have taken. So you need this. Still take your yogurt, your probiotic, your Greek yogurt that contains bifidobacteria and lactobacilli and take a lot of pineapple. And I'm telling you, you will recover from all the vagina dryness or any form of vagina dryness or vaginitis that has been caused through cloves, alum, yoni pearls and other concoctions which you have used in your vagina. So thank you very much for joining me in today's class. I remain your seasoned medical professional, Gwendolyn Halle. Till next time.